What's going on, beautiful people? It's your boy, Mr. Meyer, with the fire, here to share ideas and inspire and take our collective vibration up higher. I missed you guys. Long time no see. We have a microphone now. I don't know how well this is going to go. So this is a test video. Great stuff. Scorpio season is over. It's Sagittarius season. And we have a new moon today that we need to really talk about. It's been a lot of beginnings and endings, death and rebirth on this side. If you don't hear from me, I'm probably in the trenches. I'm probably deep in the abyss in the third house Scorpio. But I digress, guys. Let's talk about us. Let's talk about the world. Let's talk about everybody. Let's talk about the new moon in Sagittarius. We get one of these every single year. This is the beginning of the lunar cycle, starting a whole new cycle in the sign of Sagittarius, the ninth sign of the zodiac, mutable fire. This is ruled by Jupiter. The theme I want to call this new moon is about new horizons. This is all about expansion, but I would seriously encourage everybody to focus on their dreams, to pay attention to what it is that you are willing in on an internal level. Time for expansion, time for growth in all of our personal lives and extending your limitations and boundaries. Whether these are real objective limitations and boundaries or these are just self-imposed limitations or imaginary boundaries, it's time for extension. It's time to push a little bit, okay? There's a restless energy that comes with Sagittarius and Jupiter in the first place. So you're probably feeling this energy, the need to get up and go. Before we go any further in this video, I want you guys to smash the like if you ever feel this in your heart or soul. But know that faith is really the secret right now. Faith is paramount. Faith, faith is a superpower. It's paramount that we have faith in ourselves and faith in the journey. Faith is not necessarily a religious thing. It's more so a principle or a, a belief that things will work out and that the things that you experience, regardless if you like or choose them, is in some way for your best and highest good. So faith is a key ingredient, and it's often an unspoken expectation that the universe will impose upon you when you're pursuing your goals to see if you're going to maintain steady in the course of doing it. Do you want what you think you want as bad as you say you do to yourself? Do you tell other people you want it? Prove it. Prove it to the universe, too, by keeping steady when the going gets rough. Okay? How can you persevere through your determination and willpower? That's the fire element in general is the will. So I'd encourage everybody to really take the time to focus on where the heck you want to go, dude. Where and why? These are real Sagittarius questions. You need to write the goals in stone and then put your plans in the sand. The manner of getting there is liable to change. And we must plan for adversity. Adversity does build character. So the point of this new cycle, I would encourage everybody now that we're still in the beginning of this before we really break it, break it, break it down to go into your natal chart and look at the ascendant and then figure out where you have Sagittarius in your houses, whether that's the first house or the 12th house or any of the houses in between, because this is where that new energy is coming into your body. For me personally, I'm a Virgo rising. So this is a fourth house new moon and this is where the moon is home. So I'm feeling like myself, man. I feel like a new person, new love coming into my life, um, opening the heart, new energy in my home and private life. Good stuff, man. That's, that's new moon for my fourth house, for example. But just know where your new moon is and start to get in the rhythm of your life, okay? The principle of this new moon is trusting, trusting, trusting in your direction and your vision. Sagittarius rules the journey. This is a spiritual journey. And it's as above, so below. Even your physical journey is a spiritual journey. You need to clarify your why and know your why. The reason that you do the things that you do. The reason you take the actions you take. What's the purpose? If you think about um, the word why in different languages, like linguistically, this means for what? Like por qué, por qua. Why? What's the reason, you know? Your life is a finite blip of experience, I promise you, dude. This shit is just for a little bit. I will say that life is long enough if you, will, if you live it well. But think about after the finiteness of your life, what you leave behind. What would you like to be remembered for? What would you like the journey to be about? You, my friend, are the space in between your actions. So it's really important to consider why? Why? Oh, why do I take these actions? Why do I do what I do? Why am I like this? Oh, I would sure like to know. You must know thyself or you can't really know anything else in the world. 
you are the starting point, okay? The principle is to be intentional with everything in the realm of your control. And once you do this, your intentions are far more likely to manifest. When you let experience itself guide you and teach you and instruct you about how the world works, you're going to arrive at natural laws and fundamental keys and principles in truth itself. The point is let truth guide your actions. Sometimes we get disappointed when we're trying our best to be deliberate and intentional. And for some reason, the shit's not manifesting or falling in our lap. It's not coming to us, but we need to consider that we are the world. There's many types of will. Language is a very limited tool. No, limiting tool, I should say. For explaining ideas and concepts, we must be careful with these words, but know that there's a difference between your will, the world's will, and the will of other people. We want to consider what it means to embody the divine will, the will of the world. Do everything on purpose. And do purpose on everything. Believe in a higher power and higher possibilities with this new lunar cycle. I'm not calling anyone to be religious or dogmatic as a Pluto and Sagittarius. I would rather you not. I'd rather you think for your MF self, a mind that can't do that is practically useless. So make sure that you think and find freedom through your mind and not from it. But your belief filters your reality. And this is something very important to consider with the ninth house Sagittarius energy, the concepts that we, we think to be true. Sagittarius, the belief systems that you hold end up modifying your experience and your choices and your actions. And this might not be necessarily right or fair. You got to consider if your belief systems are in some way limiting your experience. What's kind of funny to think about is that something doesn't need you to believe in it to exist. So when you impose superficial limitations on your perception, you actually can neglect and ignore parts of reality that are readily in front of your face trying to teach you. Story of my life, Pluto and Sagittarius, man. So believe in higher possibilities. If you believe it's possible, you can create the circumstance of unencumbering your reality, finding freedom. I meditated yesterday and had a download from spirit for this new moon. I want to say I don't have this in my notes, but it's in my soul that you need to know that freedom is attainable if you believe. If you believe, you know. So it's time to ask for increase. You may want to look at the house that Sagittarius is in in your chart and ask for increase in that or see what's on your soul, on your Jupiter, that part of your chart. Either way it goes, it's time for more. It's time to be happy and grateful for what we have already, but ask for increase. On top of faith in your direction and your ability to persevere in the universe's benevolence to provide for you, you also need to have optimism and courage and look at things like it could be better than you expected that it could actually pay out far better than anticipated and that this world is good and that you're good and therefore good things are deserving of being in your life. Also need to have courage. I'm telling you to push past your fear in the pursuit of your goals. We just got through Scorpio, but we're not forgetting the Pluto principles, y'all, that fear is either going to protect you from legitimate danger or it's gonna impede upon your growth and you need to discern which one it is because truth be told, when you pay attention to your life and yourself, the, the details explode in front of your face, okay? Push pat, oh, right in my root chakra, I feel that. I love you guys so much and I missed you a lot and I wanted to, to, to talk to you a lot, quite literally. But I was going through my own eighth house, right? Ooh, your new life will cost your old one every single time. So the question, and I think it can only be pay, posed as a question, is that is the pain of change more or less painful for you than the pain of staying the same? If the pain of change is less painful, make that change. If the pain of change is more painful, stay the fuck there. Wait till you hit rock bottom and then maybe make a change or extension or difference. And I'm not joking. I mean this from the bottom of my heart, genuinely and compassionately. When you don't choose evolution, you choose regression in oblique or abject shapes and forms. So you just got to be real with yourself in your direction. Keep your eyes on your own paper because this is a test. And it would not be a test if you had all the answers. So get excited. You're learning and you're growing and you're probably going to get a good ass grade. If you really just take the time to slow down and not get test anxiety, the slower you um, take the test and the more calm you take the test, the easier the recall is. So let's think about the fact that this uh, 
new moon in Sagittarius is actually trying to Jupiter, which is the ruler of Sagittarius. This is beautiful. This feels like expanded horizons, limitless um, avenues of exploration, new perspectives, the gift of growth through the sun aspect. This is the sun moon conjunction, right? The new moon, the beginning of the cycle. If we look at the moon part of this aspect, this trine, this could talk about feeling totally limitless, feeling uh, brand new, you know, feeling like a clean slate, ready to take action, ready to move forward, ready to grow and pursue the vision, Sagittarius energy. This also looks like restless and unbounded energy. So it's really important to find a way to deal with it. You know, I don't even want to say deal with it, but that's, it's apt, you know, find a way to channel this into healthy avenues and I want to pause for the cause and let you know, guys, that it might not be necessary for you to figure out the how right now. With the new moon, we're putting this seed in the universe. We're just getting it started. It's really more important that you focus on that why and you focus on what it is specifically that you want to do or create or experience or the feeling that that's supposed to convey to you. Get specific about the thing that you wish to attest, uh, uh, attain, possess, or be. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Find a way to direct this energy forward, okay? Rather than racking yourself on the details. Because Jupiter does really well in Sagittarius. It does really well in Pisces. So this is a nice trine. But you got to think about how on a fundamental level, Jupiter doesn't do so well with the Gemini and the Virgo energy. When it comes to Mercury and thinking and deducing and lining up organizational, procedural, um, systematic, and connected, Jupiter gets on its own nerves when it does this. And I'm not just like literally that's what happens. When Jupiter tries to use these energies, it gets fucking frustrating. Pardon my French. It's just like a lot to think about. Jupiter Gemini is the Eight of Swords card, if you want to kind of consider that. The Nine of Pentacles is the Jupiter Pisces. So it's like two different energies, if you want to consider those. Um, that being said, this is a great time to embark on new journeys, set new projects out, new endeavors, new goals. Time to get started understand that it is a journey and we're going to enjoy the journey in the process of getting there as much as being there a really excellent time for advancing in your mental realm your spiritual journey studying working on your philosophical exploration there's all types of things you guys could do you're learning you're learning about some astrology right now but you know whatever your curiosity points you towards and your soul urges you to explore i encourage you to go investigate that but it's time to really ask yourself, what information are you lacking in the pursuit of your goals? What is it that you don't know? Truth be told, we don't know what we don't know. So the question is, what information do I need? Can you find a mentor at this time? Can you find resources that you're lacking? The thing about Sagittarius, y'all, you guys don't want to hear this shit, but Sagittarius struggles to listen a lot of times. Sagittarius may kind of already feel like it has everything figured out because it feels so confident and limitless and expansive. We need to learn how to listen, but also discern the messages that we receive because not everybody is qualified to give us information or advice or instruction upon our journey. Not everybody can even relate on our journey, but you need to understand that the universe is always conveying you messages and symbols, and it's really up to you to see the value in this stuff, okay? But you need to be careful in discerning on if others are qualified to give you certain advice. They say success leaves clues. Don't reinvent the wheel. Try to model after those that have already attained that which you desire, okay? Be aware also of your gifts, your perspective, and the things that you want to share. Because this same trine is talking about growth. And we're either going to give the growth to others or we're going to be accepting it from life itself. So in pursuit of trying to give your growth and your confidence and your expansion and your meaning and your Jupiter vision to this world, you got to be careful, man, because not everybody also needs the shit that you have. Quite literally, it goes both ways on this coin, guys. So I'm trying to be, be nice saying this and not hurt anybody's Jupiter egos, feelings, fragile ass mental body. But strengthen the fuck up, man, on my Pluto Sag. Like, understand that you're not qualified to help everybody either. You know, with your vision, what works for you might not be good for somebody else. So you need to understand that the way that you're going to find people who want your help is because they're going to ask for it know that the one surefire way to know that somebody wants your help or direction or instruction they ask okay understand that unsolicited advice is meddling unsolicited advice is meddling and a lot of my viewers need to honestly hear this because a lot of y'all are not qualified to advise me i appreciate your connection and your support 
But some of y'all need to humble yourself and sit down because our lives are different, quite literally. The concept that you may have heard before is when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. And you may end up being that teacher. So the saying actually does work vice versa. When the teacher is ready, the student appears. But you need to be willing and accepting to teach those in a way and shape and form that actually is practical, Virgo now. Okay? You may see yourself as a reflection of your dreams and truth and principles and goals. And what I've noticed is that a lot of times people can feel like a constant pressure because of their goals and their, the weight of their dreams, you know, and they hold themselves up to super high standards and a magnetism or a magnitude, I should say, that is unattainable. And sometimes they can overlook the positive changes they can make in life right now because they simply want to be more grandiose. And it's like, the message is humble yourself, man, quite literally, just humble yourself. The question I want to ask somebody in their soul, and I will pose this more like a, a question with um, like a, uh, a vision. Let's say somebody is listening to this video in the new moon in Sag, and you feel like you want to inspire and uplift others and really help people in this world. And maybe you want to be a content creator. I know it's so meta because this is content I'm creating on a video right now. But it's like my question for you, friend, is like, would you post your content if it only got one view? If you knew before posting your YouTube video or your TikTok or your Instagram reel, like, or your Facebook post that only one person was going to see it, would you be willing to do it? Or would that not be exciting enough? Would you need a minimum of 100, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000? Do you need to go viral to feel like it's worth it? Like, I'm trying to ask you. Because for me personally, y'all, me understanding my values over time, I've realized that I would absolutely post the shit for one person. That one person could be the student that needed the message, the ready student that is going to change their own life with the message and then therefore change the entire world. So you got to really learn how to not um, think so highly of yourself that you reject the world and its experiences and your own ability to help the world, you know? So that being said, I think Mercury in Sagittarius conjunct Venus and Sag is going to make a little bit easier process of this. This is putting a lot of love in the universe, high ideals, high minded. It's also helping us really relate to each other and make sense of each other and our ideas and relationships. Mercury rules our thinking and communicating and Venus rules our pleasure, our needs and how we relate to ourselves and other people. Sag is what we were talking about for the last 17 minutes, dude. So this is unbridled love, unbridled enthusiasm, a lot of curiosity. You know, the thing about Mercury and Sagittarius is this is Mercury and its detriment. It rules over um, Gemini, right? So we can see the, the interpolation between these two things where when Mercury is in Sagittarius, it's really deep thoughts, philosophical words, all encompassing viewpoints, rising above perspective to really see the meaning and the truth. This can look like overthinking, but I truly feel in my own personal life and I'm seeing this outside of me. With Venus being so close to Mercury, it doesn't really feel like overthinking. Or if we are overthinking and getting deep in the primordial waters, we're generally finding something that's beautiful. And even if, not, if it's not beautiful, this even just gives us the, um, the capacity to accept what we see. And that's really beautiful. This is helping us all be a lot more accepting and tolerant of others. With Mars being retrograde in the side of Gemini, Mercury and Venus going through Sag is honestly like a breath of fresh air. This is really helping us slow down and pump the brakes and be a little bit nicer to ourselves and other people. Easy flowing thoughts comes with this and also expanded meaning within our thoughts. Profound insight can come from Mercury and Sagittarius, downloads, sparks of inspiration, clear communication between you and the world inside and out. Talk about the messages that the universe sends you, the deep meaning that spirit's trying to convey to you, but also the way that you're able to articulate and express this to other people. This is a gift of Mercury and Sagittarius. Quite honestly, guys, they're, they're my favorite people to read for and talk to, um, especially on a one-to-one on -a -one basis. I love getting to talk to Mercury and Sag people because their way of communicating their own thoughts and even just principle in general is so articulate and so all-encompassing and so detailed. And also they have a perspective like no other. So use this window of opportunity to really arrive at some clarity, arrive at some truth and really see the beauty in everything in your life. That's a really good window of opportunity. But this with Mercury conjunct Venus is time to ask for what you want. 
It's time to ask for what you want. Three times, it's time to ask for what you want. To the universe, for yourself, from yourself, from the people in your life that you want to have things from. It's not how you say it, or it's not what you say, it's how you say it. You get more flies with honey, so be careful. There's a squirrel eating up there, man, and he just crunching. I can hear him. I was like, what is that sound? Hey, so on top of this, y'all, you got to clarify exactly what it is that you want, because how are you going to hit a target that you're not aiming at? How are you going to hit a target that you are not aiming at? It's good to be clear about what you want. Jupiter rules Sag, right? We're talking about Sagittarius, the archer. Jupiter doesn't shoot any motherfucking arrows if there's no target. You understand what I'm saying? You have to have a goal and you got to write that goal in stone and then write those plans in the sand. The tide, the cycle, the rhythm of the life that you live and the world that you're in is going to surely interrupt your plans at some time. This is why we need that perspective of the journey, the confidence to embody the journey, the will to persevere in, in, in spite of all obstacles or experiences, and to take it with full faith and presence to learn every step of the way. That's what the journey is about. So on another note, when I say getting clear about what it is that you want, I'm serious. And I need you to get specific about what it is that you want, because the universe can only give you what you ask for. And if you're not specific enough, you might get what you're asking for and not really want that. So I'm telling you guys, it's really important to be clear about where you're going and where you want to go and how you're doing it. The words I want to say is, are you in the green or are you in the red? Many of us would rather be in the, the gray, muddy area of inconclusive results, not knowing if we're failing because failure hurts our ego. But at the same time, if you don't know that you're failing, how are you supposed to address the current situation and improve upon it? How? How, Sway? How are you supposed to do that, man? You, I don't think you can, personally. I would not encourage you guys to try to prove me wrong. I would just encourage you to get specific about what it is that you're actually trying to manifest in your life and what it's supposed to feel like and how you can generate that feeling right now, how you can provide this for yourself and really lock in on it. Jupiter, why do I say Jupiter? Well, I know why I say this, but it's Sagittarius as a mutable fire sign refers to putting your fire, your vision on it, and then changing the way that you see the things. It's not always what you see, but how you see it or how you see yourself that actually makes you more capable of attaining it, okay? So discernment, discernment, discernment. That was the word. On another note, you always need to make your future bigger than your past or else, again, there's gonna be no reason to keep going or shoot any arrows forward. What would be the point if the past was as good as it's gonna get? So that's something to consider, man. Keep your Keep your optimism up and keep that cup full. You see the sun coming out on my face, man? That's what I'm talking about. The future is bright. The future is beautiful. We've been going through some dark, unprecedented times in the universe lately. These last two years, especially on Earth, man, been fucking crazy. And I mean in the universe. I'm not even just exaggerating for the fuck of it. Like, I need you guys to understand that. Everything is energy and everything is connected. Everything. Okay? So there's a lot of things happening intergalactically. And as a Virgo rising, I don't like to talk about it too much because it feels woo-woo, but you got to consider that the galactic center is in Sagittarius. And what does that mean? I'm asking you. I'm not tell I'm asking you, okay? So I got another thing before I sign off and get the heck out of here, man. We got Vesta moving into the sign of Pisces. And because this is an immutable sign, we have the new moon in Sagittarius square Vesta in Pisces. So what is this like, man? What does this mean? I'll tell you about this. That this means love is in the air. I looked at like eight birds just flying through the sky right there, man. Love is in the air. Love is in the water. Pisces is the universe. Vesta is where we find our home. Vesta is all about unconditional self-care and nurturance. And it's also about our connection with our roots and our, our cancer energy, our safety. Security at the deepest, most innermost core. We also have Lilith and Libra, uh, not Libra, Lilith and Cancer opposing Pluto and Capricorn. So it's deep shadow work time. Get excited. But this, um, <laughs> some of y'all are not that excited, man. Let's get excited. I brought the tarot cards out. I want to pull at least one card for you guys as I'm talking about this because we are talking about Pisces. But this is really about finding our home within spirit's divine, unconditional love. The thing about Pisces is this is the other Jupiter ruled sign like we did talk about. And here's the strength card talking all about love 
in the, the, the embodiment of the divine will with perfect love and trust. Look at all those infinities, you know, that is love. But the thing about Pisces governing over our beliefs or our unconscious paradigms, this means paradigms need to be adjusted quite literally. Limiting beliefs are being called to be addressed and even rising to the surface. So the thing about Pisces is this clarifies our um, avenues of escape. Oh, I'm going to rip you guys a new ass right quick, man. But um, clarify overindulgence in your life because this one square that we have with this new moon in Sagittarius is also looking like we, we unconsciously as a people on earth want to be even more deeply immersed with spirit right now is what this one says. So it's not what you're doing, it's how you're doing it and why you're doing it. So we're on the same page, I hope, if you're still following me. Clarify overindulgence because everything is needed to be in moderation. Be aware of toxic excess in your life, hedonism in your life. I'm not the one, as a Libra moon, I'm just going to be honest. It's not fair for me to judge your life on these parameters. You are the only one who really understands your own journey, your own strengths and efficiencies and deficiencies enough to be able to clarify which things got to go and which things are too much. You got to keep your eyes on your own paper. Don't let other people's judgment affect you in a way that's not fair. Like, again, we got to rewind back to sort of the beginning. Consider that some people are not qualified to advise you, okay? But either way it goes, you got to consider where are you escaping your suffering and where should you really embody it with more love and pers perspective and hold a higher capacity for love and truth and patience? These are questions. You find out where, okay? But another thing to consider, guys, because this is Sag and it's unbounded and it's the two Jupiter signs at a square, is that this is really going to um, deepen all of us into our spirituality in some way, shape, or form. For better or for worse, this is a judgment card on top of this love coming in, you know, but a lot of judgment because this is going to really put people a little bit more firmer in their 12th and 9th house and feel like spirit is really behind them more in all realms. So this does look like religious grandiosity. This looks like preacher extremist energy too. This looks like you can't tell me fucking anything because I know everything in the motherfucking world. This looks like submit to my truth because my truth is the truth. How the fuck are you going to say your truth is the truth? You might have a truth. So keep that in mind. Don't ever fucking forget that, y'all. Unsolicited advice is meddling. Be fucking for real. Be mindful of irresponsible self-sacrifices. And that says exactly what I just said. But also, the ways that you try to serve people through your actions and your time and your effort and your energy. The words are illusionary success. You play a stupid game, you win a stupid fucking prize, man. So let's not do that. Quit martyring yourself to get the constellation prize of victimhood. That shit is dead and gone and old, man. What age are we in right now, y'all? You tell me. I love you, but you tell me. We got to like, hope we're catching on. I don't have all the answers, guys. I promise you, I have just all the questions. So this same angle makes me sound like an asshole. But dude, I'm telling you, the only way to end the cycle of masochism is by creating a new motherfucking cycle, a different cycle. We've been doing this shit for thousands of fucking years, man. And I'm kind of tired of this shit, quite honestly. And I wasn't really going to talk about this specifically, but this came out like as soon as I came out here. We've been doing a lot of channeling and divining. Same shit we do every day, Pinky. Like, it's, it's the work. But this message is brought to you by Chiron and Aries. The divine will. Okay? Chiron and Aries is really telling us, again, that it's really imperative that we be intentional with everything in the realm of our control. And this one is for love because there is a need for more love. And love with the, the, the Vesta Pisces, love is something we all need to survive, y'all. And quite honestly, the fastest way for a lot of us to merge into the universe and feel that serenity and that divine unconditional love is to surrender to the love of another person, romantic love. You, feel, you following me? So that being said, Chiron and Aries wants you to know that the biggest reason why most romantic relationships don't work out is because people don't have any will, any purpose, or any vision outside of their partner. They use romantic love as an abject form of escapism, and it's based on fear, it's based on despondency, it's based on desperation, and it's based on fucking laziness. So be fucking for real, man. The love of another person cannot substitute your love for yourself and your love for the world. And some of y'all might not feel like you love the world, but it's time that you butch up a little bit, man, and open your motherfucking heart. I don't know how many times I've said this. I'm tired of telling y'all to open your heart, but 
we're going to do this shit while we're tired. I don't care, man. My South Node Pisces and my Mars and Cancer cannot use tired as an excuse for anything in this life besides staying awake. <laughs> uh, but, um, but I hope you're getting the principles because I love you from the bottom of my heart and the top of my soul. Libra Moon, Pluto Sag. But that being said, my love is, my love is not enough for you. You need to find the strength inside of your own heart and your own soul, okay? Be fucking for real. I'm tired of telling people to be honest, but this is how we learn. We just got to ask ourselves, are we living truth? Are we making ourselves a reflection of the principles we understand and using these levers of higher um, natural laws to affect positive change on this realm? So I love you guys so much. This is the time for you to hit the like, leave a comment, and go to simplifiedastrology.com to support your boy. We've got the hoodies in stock. The book is in stock. The course is there. For a little bit longer, we're going to adjust that pretty soon. So make sure you hop on that before it's closed. I have a couple spots for personal readings. You can catch me on TikTok Live for live tarot. We do Reiki on Sundays. But I got questions for you, and these are for the comments, y'all. Where is this new moon falling in your chart? What house? What's it looking like? What are you willing in right now? What are you creating? Where are you, where are you pointed at? What limits are you breaking down? And what are you expanding? Let me know. I love you guys.